Dan. Dee Dee. It's just me and you this week. Chris is in the strip club capital of the world, <laughs> Tampa, Florida. Shouts to Tampa. Shouts to <laughs> Just right. Shouts to Chris and his family vacation in the strip club capital of the world. Yeah. Shouts yeah. to him. <laughs> um, is there any place that you want to go to that has <laughs> a very interesting thing about it? Like, like Tampa is the strip club capital of the world. Sure. Um, I know there's lots of places that have the world's largest hat, the world's <laughs> largest pie. Is there any place like that? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that you're like, I gotta go here. Or any monument, something like that, that. You're like, that's the only reason you're going to that place. Right. Right. Ooh. So I'll start because yeah, I'm gonna, this at you. I'm gonna, yeah, let me think about this while you get yeah, you got I'm assuming you have something in mind at least. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> so I don't think I'll ever go to this place. But I want to go to it now because I found something out about it. Um, I really want to go to um, Frick. What was I? I just lost my train of thought. So this is a great podcast way to start. Um, <laughs> so I really want to go to. I really want to go to Mount Rushmore because I just found out that it's really small. <laughs> and now I'm fascinated okay. by Mount Rushmore because I saw like a picture of someone being like uh what you think mount rushmore looks like based on what it actually is when you go there oh really and apparently it's huge if you fly next to it which is all the pictures we've seen oh sure all right. the pictures that we've seen of mount rushmore it's right it, it's right there and it's huge right but where you see mount rushmore it's really tiny <laughs> so now <laughs> i just want to go to mount rushmore to like make fun of it so um wow yeah Mount Rushmore South Dakota it's the only it's... way you're getting me there I think yeah no that's another good point South Dakota that's yeah not convenient for anybody yeah, yeah. right I, I'm never going there but that's the one place in my mind that I'm like if I, one place I might have to do that now yeah yeah um I don't know about weird yeah I'm trying to think of some weird places that I want to get to i've always kind of like had this weird fascination with stonehenge for no reason whatsoever <laughs> other than the fact that like everybody has a fascination with it just because they can't no idea what it is why it was there and it's just like and that's another thing like you can't get close i don't think you can get very close out there so i think i'd go there and be also very disappointed and be like what am i doing here looking at like the the, the photos look better the like mystique yeah. of what Stonehenge is is better than going there and being like, huh, there they are. There's yeah. the stones. I came all the way, drove all the way out here in the countryside of England to see that. Like, mm. yeah, there's, I don't know. There's the stones. There they are. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I think about that with a lot of things. Um, just because like there are these things you want to see, like that you've seen in history books, like your whole life, like basically grades K through 12, you see these same things all the time. You're like, wow, I really want to see that. And I'm like, you know, would going to see the pyramids be cool or not? <laughs> right. I just, I'm, or would it, is it just cooler to see the pictures? Like, yeah. I really, like, because I don't understand what you do once you get there. And I guess maybe that's like my personality, right? Like I, I go places to do things. Mm -hmm. So once I'm done doing that. Like, all right. Now what? I'm like, all right, let me get on this 100 hour flight home. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's weird that there are certain things, right? That you can, when you see them in person, like, it, you're in awe and that there's this thing about it that you can't capture. But then there are certain things that you go to and you see, and you're like, this ruined what I thought this was. <laughs> this experience made this worse because I'm just looking at it further away than in pictures. And we're just standing around and like, yeah, now what? Now what? Yeah. Why did we come, yeah. What do we come out here to do and see? So there's, they always say, don't meet your heroes, right? For like a similar type of reason, it's like be careful, <laughs> be careful on some of those things you've been dying to see. You might, uh, you yeah. might regret it. Because I've heard from several people that the Eiffel Tower not all that great, but at least you're in a city. Like you're there. You're like mm, true. That kind of sucked. 
but you're in, you're in Paris. Like you're in a city, so you're going to do other things. And the Eiffel Tower is like there. But That's I've true. heard like not all that great. And I've heard that from several people. Not yeah. that I don't want to go there myself and be the person that says, you know what? The one in Vegas is better. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's Although there is a good there is a good argument to that. I will say I've been to both and Vegas has some things that Paris does not, so <laughs> It's a tough <laughs> argument. It's fair. <laughs> well, let's get it started. It's the brunch breakdown. I'm Daniel DD out here in Los Angeles. Dan is in Pittsburgh, and Chris is in the strip club capital of the world, Tampa Bay, Florida. Shouts to him and his fam. He will not be here today, but we'll, we'll miss you, Chris. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah. Anyways, today on the show, we're going to be talking about Taylor Swift's Eras tour opening uh in Arizona, where her concert was very long and we're going to talk about a lot of things that have to do with that opening night concert because you listen dan's huge taylor swift fan i am a taylor swift observer and i'm excited to talk about it (laughs) um and we found this cool story uh about how on uh, 14 billion dollars were spent by drunk people (laughs) shopping in 2022 so Amazing. we're gonna talk about that. We've got brunch court, we've got music, we've got alcohol, we've got a lot of things to get to. Dan, tell everybody where they can find the brunch breakdown. Yeah, absolutely, Will. And you can find the brunch breakdown anywhere you listen to podcasts, people. We've been telling you this for a while now, but if you're new to the program and you're not familiar, you know, we're on Apple, Spotify, Google, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Odyssey, Audible, Good Pods, everywhere, man. Everywhere. <laughs> You can find podcasts. You can find The Brunch Breakdown. Make sure you're following or subscribing so those episodes come to you each and every Wednesday. We've got brand new episodes every week. Don't miss them. So hitting follow, hit subscribe. Make sure those episodes come to you first thing Wednesday morning. We also have full video episodes on our YouTube and our Facebook pages. Those premiere at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Also on that same Wednesday and available on demand anytime you want to watch after that. Brunch Court, very popular segment on the program. Visuals, very key to brunch courts. Make sure you check those out as well. Wherever we're on social media, at Brunch Breakdown. That's the handle. Find us everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Triller, TikTok, everywhere. Follow us. We'll follow you back. Let's be friends. And of course, we always give you what we're listening to each and every week. And we put that into a playlist on Spotify. We call it the Sounds of Brunch. All you got to do is go to Spotify, search Sounds of Brunch, hit follow exclusively Spotify, find it. Enjoy beautiful well let's get it started let's get random topics off our chest dan what's on your mind dude so dd we uh went to a there's a there's a new brewery in the pittsburgh scene um out of virginia very popular brewery aslin uh brewery has opened a tap room in pittsburgh very exciting uh huge new tap room amazing they've got a full kitchen uh, been there a couple times just for some drinks and went there this past weekend with some friends and w- was looking forward to it because we planned to eat there. And from what we had seen, you know, they had a, a very cool taco menu, right? They was like, like, that was the concept was tacos and was very excited for that. How could you not be excited for tacos, right? Tacos and beer. Let's go. And we find out prior to that. They had to completely change the concept, the food concept at the tap room because the menu failed. And friends of ours had asked a, the server their previous trip to there. They said, why did you change the menu? And they said, our menu failed. We had to make it more Pittsburgh. For those of you not quite familiar with what exactly that means. I love my city to death, but this is absolutely pathetic. Okay. Nice, enjoyable tacos is just not good enough for people that need their burgers and their fries and their chicken tenders and their Nashville hot chicken sandwiches that every damn restaurant is already serving around the city i'd say we're better than this but clearly that's not the freaking case okay not everywhere is going to have basic food for you basic bitches and it's just so aggravating that this successful brewery comes into town with obviously a kitchen concept that they have at other places they're based out of virginia and it was failing tacos 
were failing because they had to make it more Pittsburgh. They yinzerfied the menu. They yinzerfied the menu. Credit to Christy on that yinzerfied. But people, don't ruin a good thing. You know, these were tacos, nothing complicated. And, and before you ask, because I did, I thought about it. No, there were no other taco places nearby. Nowhere close. So not a problem. Not the case. So this is extremely frustrating, extremely embarrassing. And Pittsburghers, I need you to get with the times. Let us have, let us just have nice things, you know, elevate the palate. Come on, get it together. Be better, do better. Really frustrating afternoon, Didi. Really frustrating. Oh my God, that's amazing. I thought what you were going to say when you said it at first, I was like, oh my God, please tell me they made a Pittsburgh taco. <laughs> with I wish, I wish that was the case. Tacos with fries on it. Okay, weird, <laughs> stupid, but whatever. Do that. No, Possibly they had to delicious. dumb it down. Wow. They so they just completely changed the menu. Yeah. Wow. They weren't making enough money on food. It was failing. They had to change it. They had to put the basic shit on there. And it's just, come on. Like, come well, on. It, well, shouts to them for at least trying. Yeah. Because they didn't just like, someone just said, it wasn't like like one random Pittsburgher was just like, listen, uh, this isn't going to work. And then they didn't do it. So at least they tried it. But man, dude. You know what? That actually kind of makes me happy a little bit, though. Just, what? You know, I want Pittsburgh to still be Pittsburgh when I come <sighs> home, when I come to visit. But here's I the thing. I... We we had this conversation, too. There are there's still plenty of that. Like, we want, like, Yinzer places. Like, we want that. We want the separation, though. And when we want the elevated places, mm -hmm. we don't need those things blending. All right? This was something new, nice, shiny. We don't need that old school crowd coming in here and and, and ruining it. We want We want both. We like both, but separate. And so they just, we just, we just can't have it. We just can't have it. Hermione's is across the street. It's right there. It's literally across the street. It doesn't get any more yeah. user than that. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. 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 <laughs> well, I got to get this off my chest. Um, so March Madness is going on. It's been going on all week. I love the first couple weekends of the tournament. Um, and I have to say, the amount of shock people have when an upset happens in 2023 is very weird to me because not that they've been happening our whole lives. It's just that like all we hear in the conversation with college, sport, especially college basketball, is how like the players don't stick around. The players mm -hmm. transfer. The players go to the NBA after one year, whether they're really good or they're just mediocre. They go and try it out because they want to get paid. So this is all people talk about. So then when a fairly Dickinson beats Purdue, who's full of players who are going pro in things other than sports, right? And they're playing <laughs> another team yeah. who's got a bunch of dudes who are going to be working at enterprise or wherever else the NCAA plugs during all of their games. Why are we so shocked by this? Now, like, I get it. I get the whole 16-1. It's, it's happened twice now. I get it. But I'm just like the shock of it when all you talk about is how there's like these great players don't stick around for this long. Like, it's not like Florida in 2007 where they had a whole group of freaking players who'd been together for three years. They won two national championships. That's not the case anymore. So, like, you have these guys who've played together for a long time like there's more three-pointers than ever that kind of evens the game too and then you just have great basketball players on both sides one might be bigger than the other like no one's as big as that seven foot four waste of space that Purdue has but like I don't know it's just it's just funny to me listening wa like watching it all I was like wow that happened and it was like cool to watch it but just like the shock of it I don't understand because of the way we talk about college basketball now and how like just complaining about college basketball mostly and how it's not good anymore. And it's that, and it's like, all right, well, these things are going to happen. They're going to happen a lot. Like we watch 15s beat twos. Like we watch all this stuff happen. And I'm like, hello, oh, this is the NCAA tournament now for better or for worse. <laughs> it makes me nervous about the second weekend than <laughs> the first weekend. Right. Cause now I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, <laughs> cause yeah, I don't know how great some of these games are going to be with some of these high seeds 
making it to the Sweet 16. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But anyways, just had to get that little ramble off my chest. Stop being surprised, guys. Yeah, yeah. like the, the blue, bu- blue bloods aren't, you know, the same as what they used to be. You know, kids yeah. are finding, are going to other schools. NIL's involved now, so they don't need to go to those ones. It's not going to be Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina every year. You know, there's going to be more and more upsets, though, the way that the talent is spread across these schools. And yeah, it's less shocking. It's less shocking. Yeah. The fact that we went how many years without a 16 beating a one, and now it's happened twice in like four or five years. So yeah. it's obviously like that's not going to be the stunning surprise anymore. Um, it's going to no. be more more common. And so my fear, not to turn this into a sports brunch, is there's talk <laughs> about college basketball going in the same direction that college football seems to be going, where like the power five break away and they have their own tournament and there's less Cinderella's. That would be bad for this sport. That would be really bad. I get it for football, but for this sport, like it kind of shows you why that shouldn't be happening. Like right now, these weekends, I mean, yeah, one team season could be ruined just like that one bad day, but you know, usually at the end of the day, the two better teams are in the championship, right? It's never like, oh man, the Cinderella doesn't make it to the championship. It just makes for more, it's more entertainment along the way. So don't, don't take that away from us, but yeah, yeah. The surprise of the way people still get shocked and like the perfect graphic. No one's making perfect graphic brackets anymore. That's not, no, not making that a thing. You can win a million dollars with a perfect graphic bracket. No, 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 no. Like I'm amazed if you have a perfect bracket after the first, I don't know, day. Yeah. Yeah. Like I that, like that's a win in itself. Like right. I don't know what you expect to happen. It's like and all the brackets were busted by like the time Arizona lost or something like that. It was mm-hmm. just like what like midday done. So yeah, I don't know. But I still <laughs> enjoy it. It's just it was just the shock of it all. It's like we taught we complain about college basketball all the, all the time. And then like when some, you know, Big Ten powerhouse loses, we're like, oh my God, how could this ever happen? You know? Mm-hmm. It's like you got all the blue bloods are like out now. Kansas, Kentucky, Duke, gone. Yeah. Like yeah. Exactly. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> well, let's uh, get to alcohol, man. It's Brews Day. Um, I have some wine today, guys. Wine. And I, uh, yeah, I got some wine. Just to let you know how. Um, how today, do you brew that? <laughs> uh, you, you don't. You don't brew it. You don't brew it. But uh, I talked about this a couple weeks ago. But I got some again, and I just want everybody to know that I'm obsessed with Josh Sellers Reserve Collection, and this is their Bourbon Barrel cab and it's so good it's 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 fire i'm gonna have some right now because you know what it's been a day got three kids folks for people just joining us it's been a wild day (laughs) so there we go anyways it's amazing go check it out like 20 bucks wherever you're getting your stuff so that's a little on that like because you really shouldn't buy wine that's more than 20 bucks and i've been told this by several people Mm -hmm. who are like sommeliers they're like "Eh." Don't do it. This is like 20 bucks. Get it. It's fire. Trust me on this. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah. I need to get a, I need to be on the lookout for that. Get it. Um, Get it. It's why it's, I mean, I'm sure it's wide everywhere. You can find this. Like it's, it will be easy to find. That's the one thing about Pennsylvania is we don't do a lot of things well in terms of like liquor and stuff like that, but wine is usually okay. It's usually okay in this state. Yeah, okay you'll here. be able you'll be able to find this josh sellers bourbon barrel reserve cab it's 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 special like and that. i'm obsessed with wine and bourbon barrels now yeah because this is one of many that i have been trying now because bourbon everything within a bourbon barrel is just better hard to argue better. hard to argue yeah. well today um you know what i didn't even put this together but you know just off my chest segment with tacos there. Um, this is from the good people at, at Brew Gentlemen. Um, okay. And this is their uh, Mexican coffee stout. So, of course, <laughs> yeah, Mexican coffee stout. So, um, love this. This is your uh, Brew Gentlemen's fantastic. Everything that they do. Um, coffee oatmeal stout with cinnamon and vanilla. And you do. You get that. It's really well balanced. Um, that coffee and cinnamon kind of on the front. And it's like a well, it's it is it's well balanced cinnamon. Sometimes you can over cinnamon a stout sometimes where it like becomes almost a little spicy, spiced maybe mm-hmm. a little too much of that. But this this is not that at all. And then the oatmeal on the back, kind of really 
balances it out really nicely. Again, brew gentlemen can basically do no wrong. And you know what? Mexican coffee, it's shout out to all the taco joints still out there kicking it in the berg. You know, this is for you, but love this. Nice. And you know what? The underrated, I, I you know, craft beer is wonderful, but the underrated value of a 12 ounce craft beer. Oh, it's, yeah. you know, sometimes yep. that's all you need. And especially with the stout, you know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. it's, so it's a little tip of the cap to every once in a while, the 12 ounce slim can beer is the way to go. And especially, yeah, especially stout. My goodness gracious. So be having this. Is there, a, is there a reason for that? Is there like a, is there just, is there a reason for why? Why craft, craft beer's a, 16 ounce cans? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Why is there? Never thought of that. Because I, I feel like there's probably some kind of, I don't know, inside beer making situation, like consistency or something like that. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. There's got to be. There's got to be, right? Other than just like financially driven, like, oh, we can sell 16 ounce cans and charge more for them. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good, that's, I have to do a little research on that. Why that was that, why that became a trend and why that's the thing now, 16 ounces. Yeah. Um, cause it's but, like, you can charge, cause you can charge more for it, but like, we already know why most places are, you know, cause it's not like these are huge national chains when you're doing this stuff. So like mm -hmm. whatever it costs, it costs, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like it's gotta be more than cost, more than like profit to that. Yeah, Hopefully. yeah, I would no, I would think, I would think yeah. there's got to be another reason behind it. I'm gonna do a little research to look into yeah. that. Yeah, do that. At brunch breakdown, let us know. Yeah, but cheers, Dan. Cheers. Let's do it. All right, let's get into this menu, boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Swift, man. Eras tour has launched. Did you get tickets? Are you going? No. To Pittsburgh. No. Couldn't couldn't Not win the lottery. It. Couldn't win the lottery. Uh, no. Oh man, Ticketmaster. That's a whole other conversation. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> Ticketmaster. Good lord. We'll do that one of these days. Um, well, she launched her tour um in Arizona this past Friday and last night, too. And uh it's three hours long. 44 songs, three hours long. And she goes into it does at least one song from every Taylor Swift album. Man. And uh, you can find the set list everywhere. Basically, everyone has spoiled this entire show, which <laughs> is annoying. But like, listen, if everybody's talking about it, so are we. Um, but yeah, uh, three hour concert. That was my first question to you, Dan. Do you want to see anybody for three hours? And me and you are people who go to concerts all the time. Yep. We support our favorite artists. We've spent amounts of money that we don't even want to repeat on on our favorite artists mm -hmm. and three hours though how you feel dude yeah no i can't that's too much that's too much like yeah even for my favorite of favorite of favorites icons that three consecutive hours for one or that's right we're this is just taylor this oh right? it's just taylor oh, this yeah. isn't including the opening acts people no this no. is just she her. started she started at eight and left this in the concert ended at 11 11. she went <sighs> she, the show was three hours and 11 minutes long i, I no i can't i can't i can't do that i can't do that i mean i would have to have some sort of like extended intermission for three hours for even my even my favorite artist it's just that's so much to take in over that i mean i'm like Imagine why aren't watching a football game without halftime, just like straight through. I'd be like, oh gosh. <laughs> and there's even stops, right? Plays. Yeah. This is just like go, go, go. And like there has to be some extended breaks in this thing, right? For her to rest. She can't perform for three straight hours without going back. You know, obviously costume changes, things like that. But just her voice for three yeah. hours. Um, yeah, man, that that's mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, too much, too much. To that point, as you say, <laughs> there are breaks. 
I gotta tell you, I'm looking at this set list, and I have no beef with Taylor. Like I, like I enjoy Taylor Swift's music, but like, I gotta say, I'm looking at this, and all I can think of is like, wow, you you really like those last couple albums, huh? You uh. really like Evermore and Folklore, because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve songs from Folklore and Evermore. Twelve. I'm like, dude. Read like I'm sorry. I know people love Taylor Swift, and it's hard to find any hate on Taylor Swift in this show because anybody who went to it is like posting up a storm, right? Mm -hmm. But like, twelve of those songs are from those two albums that like they happened. (laughs) But dude, Taylor, like, there's no way the crowd is excited. Like, no, and how can you be during those songs? Like, and I've I've said it, and I, as a Swifty, I've said that I was never, I was not a big fan of either of those albums. Like, I get why she did it, and the timing made sense, yeah. but like, I'm not, like, I can't get all jazzed up and excited to listen to twelve of them. I mean, holy <laughs> cow! There's your breaks right there. That's the bathroom breaks. Is like, yeah, for me, yeah, like, oh, geez, oh man, it's too much, you know. And you only see like. Four off of Reputation, four off of Red, um, five off of 1989, which I think is her best album. She'll never be able to surpass it. Um, <laughs> and like, I get you don't want to keep going to the old stuff, but but dude, th- that's a lot of that that new stuff because she then you know there's a bunch of you know obviously for Midnight's there's a lot from there too. Seven songs off of Midnight's, I get that, but yeah, she piled in heavy folklore. Evermore, Midnight's is. It's like a third of this show are those Dude, three albums. It feels I, – I, yeah, I really would love to just be in the arena when she does those parts of the show. Because, mm-hmm. because listen, every artist has – you know, most artists have – when you're around for as long and you put as much music out as Taylor Swift does, you're going to have those albums that, like, no one really messes with. It's like, yeah, you know – like prior to you know you know whenever we thought Kanye was a normal person, there are Kanye albums I don't need to hear live. I don't I don't need to hear those some songs live. I just I just don't. And it's the same way with Jay Z or with Beyonce or whoever it is that you like. I'm like eh, I'm good. This is like on some weird like Bruce Springsteen like type thing yeah. here where like you just Dude. hear about him like he just was he just never leaves madison square garden he's just there and he's just performing for a million hours and you're just like what is happening yes but like th- dude dude that's also, ex- that's just an exhausting night also she performs the 10 minute version of all too well <laughs> yo we've talked about that one before <laughs> no wonder it's three hours she had to get that one in 10 minutes? <laughs> okay. As someone who almost cried when Kanye performed the nine minute version of Runaway Live, I'm going to give people a little bit of. All right. I'll leave people alone on that. <laughs> but still, 10 minutes, it, man. It go- she goes, she goes, I knew you were trouble, which is a great song, into All Too Well. In the 10 minute version, and then a spoken interlude. Like right there, after I knew you were trouble, I'm like, whew, great one. All right. Be back in a half hour. Sure. See ya. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> like, I don't know how you, because just the flow of this, maybe this will be cleaned up because there's a break between tour dates in this, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And maybe it, this thing will change a little bit. Maybe though somebody will hit the edit button. Someone will be like, hey, Taylor, like, I really don't think you should get people as hyped up. Like, you get in the red. Dude, 22, we're never getting back together. I knew you were in trouble. Then you get to all too well. What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, you like, have to be able to – she's too – and I get why she's so excited to perform these old, these Taylor oh, version yeah. songs, right? Yeah. I, I completely understand that. But, like, do that tour. Then do another tour. Do Split them yeah. up. You can't be like, all right, now I got to cover everything. Like, as artists get older and grow, she's still in her 30s. Yeah. When is she, she's going to have to cut some songs out eventually. She's not cutting anything out. The tours are just getting longer. She's like, I'm not cutting it. I'm just adding. You got to cut. Yeah. You got to cut somewhere. 
And like, again, I know why right now, this tour, this moment, she wants to do those songs, right? We get it. It makes sense. But like, do two different tours or something. This is too this much. Is Your next tour is going to look nothing, nothing like this. So no. it's just like, you got to, those are tough to, I, I get their tough decisions, but I mean, holy cow. That's. Yeah. I am. That's yeah, a lot. This, it just. Listen, if you went to the show, hit us up. Let us know yep. how you feel about it at Fresh Breakdown. Because I just need to know. Like, w- you couldn't have been hyped for three hours. I refuse to believe that. No. Like, I just, and if you think about it, and like, all right, the show was in Arizona. I'm not saying a lot of people don't live in Arizona, but I know a few people. I know more than a few people, actually, who actually traveled to go to the show. Because this is a show that Paramore was opening up for, right? Mm-hmm. So I knew people who went to this show. And I'm just like. Yeah, you couldn't have been expecting her to go on at eight. No, exactly eight. No way. Like that's another exactly eight. She went on and didn't stop. And I just and also like opening with Miss Americana and the heartbreak. Like, oh yeah, I don't get that either. What do we do? What do we do, I, dude? I, I hope this something changes here because this does not make me excited to um do some last minute stub hubbing in September to go see the show. <laughs> Cause there's just a lot going on. Like my wife said, and I told you this before we went on, like, she was like, can I show up for the last hour? <laughs> She's like, can I buy, can I buy someone, someone's ticket walking out in the last Seriously. Hour? And am I, re- am I That's reading it. this right? I, again, if anybody is going to this show and spoiler alert, we, we obviously you missed, uh, we missed you there. Um, but here's another one. <laughs> She really, she finishes. It's all midnight songs. Yeah, the last seven yeah. songs are from midnight. Yeah, from midnight. What? I, dude. What you fit for I, the last song again? Spoiler. The last song is Karma. Yeah. What? I, yeah. I thought the same thing. I cannot believe. I cannot believe that this show didn't start with honestly, I'm surprised this show didn't start with anti-hero. I really just didn't think I thought this, right. like I honestly thought the whole show would start with that baseline and everyone would like lose their whole shit and then just like that would just be it, right? And plus it says it's me high. Like what the fuck? Like start yeah. the show. Yeah. Like right. <laughs> like but I can't believe that wasn't the closer. That is like it, 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 dude, I think right. a lot's gonna change here. I think I, I think so. a lot's gonna change here. Cause I hope so. you don't need to go in that order for like to close. Yeah. Everything else I get, what but to we... close. Hmm. Mm-mm. No, if you sit through yeah. three hours and then you <laughs> the last song is karma, and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. It's wow. but but should I don't know if anyone should do three hours. Like I've even I went to see Beyonce once and she didn't perform single ladies one of the times that I've seen Beyonce. She didn't perform it. I didn't know until the next day. Didn't wow. even realize it till the next day. Wow. I'm like, Taylor, you should take note. No one's gonna notice. Yeah. Until the next day. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you miss out on something. I yeah. um no one should be doing like 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 Paul McCartney could maybe get away with the three hour show because he would do like That's... Cause he's not like going on like a huge tour or anything like that yeah. anymore, but like still like <sighs> Michael Jackson could have got away. Maybe could have got, could have got away with three hours, but n- no, he wouldn't be able to no. dance for that long. He wouldn't be able to do that three for that hours, long. Dude. And that would be, you know what? Cause yeah, he doesn't have, he wouldn't have been able to do that. And it would have been exhausting to be there. You'd yeah. have been exhausted. You'd have oh, been too, it'd been so, too, so much hype in like an hour, two hours into it. You're like, Oh my gosh. Only ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Taylor, uh, maybe this is the best concert ever, and we're just talking shit on it. I have no idea, but three. I hours hope so. Is too long. I hope so because I love yeah. it. But yep, <sighs> a lot. Yeah, three lot. hours, too long. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into our second story here. Um, Americans spent fourteen billion dollars drunk shopping last year daniel are you a drunk amazoner have you have you are you known to do any drunk purchasing typically no um have i yeah sure (laughs) um 
but I try to I try to stay away from that because it's a dangerous it's a dangerous game. Yeah, forty five million people admitted to doing that. That's a big number, everybody. <laughs> it's yeah. a big number. And then you average it out the amount that was spent. It's about three hundred and ten dollars a person, or last year, spent money while drunk. Um, and it seemed like what food was obviously the most popular one. Alcohols and they're buying more alcohol, which is just seems kind of weird. Um, yeah. but yeah, for me, I think the most I've ever, what I've ever purchased was like, I've done, I know I've done clothes. Like oh, I'm getting it. I'm getting the jacket. I've, I've thought about it. I'm getting the jacket, uh, or like tickets to an event. I've done that mm -hmm. before too. Anything in question, but yeah, no, it seems like that's kind of, you know, normal compared to what some other people have, have done here based on this study. Uh, yeah uh <laughs> i it's because it's sometimes it's stuff like don't get me wrong there will be sometimes it's just like i have to be drunk to buy this like otherwise or i have to be like drinking or something to buy this thing mm -hmm. but like for the most part it's usually like big things that i don't want that i just wouldn't do yeah normally like like i bought a computer drunk before because i was like i can't it's like you're skewing that average up. That's what's yeah. That's what's doing. Yeah, that's the problem. I bought a computer drunk before, but yeah, I'm a part of this. And when you say three hundred ten dollars, it's like, you know, I kind of believe it. <laughs> and also another reason why I believe it, um, is that some of the times when uh my our parents send us things, I'm like for the kids. Sometimes I wonder. Was there a little sauce involved <laughs> before you bought this? And sometimes it's like they've bought things a couple times that like we got like the same books like twice. And we're like, guys, so a little sauce involved. Mm -hmm. I wonder. You know, I I I just I just wonder a, a little bit there. So like when you say three hundred ten dollars, and it seems like a lot when you say fourteen billion, but that's like three hundred ten dollars seems about. Seems about right. Seems to make a reasonable average. Yeah. yeah. For the people who makes dumb purchases. Like buying, honestly, it's dumb shit. Like for the, for the kids too, where it's like just buying dumb shoes for the kids that like, why are you spending like any money more than $20 on kid shoes? But yeah. you're like, I don't know. You're drunk. All of a sudden Jordan show up at your house. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Shoes, clothes. That was definitely the yeah. most, uh, along with food. Um, and then based on this report, uh, gambling came in heavy. <laughs> Cigarettes <laughs> came in heavy. Heavy Gambling, that's a dangerous one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and then, yeah, you have some of those bigger purchases like vacations. Booking vacations <laughs> while yeah. drunk. Dangerous. Dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, furniture. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what else? DVDs, movies, or streaming services. Uh, that I could see. You're all yeah. talking about your favorite show. Oh, do you guys have uh, HBO Max? No. You got to get it. All right. I'll get it right now. <laughs> that could be uh, dangerous. And then there's just... I don't I don't understand this, like that these numbers are so high. 19% uh, claimed they bought a pet. Oh, dude, kidding? I can see that. I can see that. I can Ooh. see that. I wouldn't personally, because me, I, I don't want any pets, but like I could... 100 percent see some people in my life just yeah all of a sudden buy a pet 19 percent yeah i could see, oh my god i could see that i could see that so hard jeez oh man um and then 16 percent bought a car <laughs> what yes how do you just first of all how do you do that like i mean I, carvana i guess they're buying it on carvana i uh -huh. I guess that's what you're doing. Boy, oh boy. One of those vending machines. There's one of those vending machines in Long Beach, I believe. And I like pass it whenever I have to go do like stuff in the OC. And mm -hmm. I'm like, it, I mean, it's cool looking. It looks just like it does in the commercial. It does. It's like, it's, and it's like, huge. I can't believe I've seen it cars. times. We, there's one out not far from us either. And it's like, it'll go times there's always like three cars in there. I'm like, that was yeah. full two weeks ago. How <laughs> people are really doing this. Dude, Yikes! That's that's terrifying. That might be more terrifying than gambling. Yes, yes. Um, 
Did yeah, they give that's... you like a, I want did they give you a 24 hour like policy like flights do? Cuz you know like <laughs> when you buy like when you buy flights, you buy flights drunk, you wake up you see email be like, "Oh my god. No, yeah. no, I'm <laughs> not going to see the pyramids. Like what am I doing?" <laughs> like That's a good question. Um but yeah, and then this report also says that, you know, way more men have admitted to doing it than women. Yeah. Uh which yeah. is good, I think. Um or no, it's not good. It's not. It's actually bad. That's actually bad. I meant to say that that's bad. I feel like no. I don't know. If, although, hmm, who's more impulsive, men or women, when it comes to per- men? Yeah, men. Yeah, I don't think. Ones- yeah, men, men. The women aren't buying the cars. They're not. No. They're not. Their women aren't that stupid. Because women talk us into making big purchase because for the most part guys yeah. are more conservative than mm-hmm. women are when it comes to making the big purchases and they're the ones that like send us over the- especially like when it comes to like clothes or shoes or whatever it is it's like we may do it but then for a lot of guys like hell including the one who's in tampa chris <laughs> like his wife has to tell him to to buy these things yep so yep. like yep i feel like if he saw something that he really liked it would have to be like <laughs> gonna go do it you know but women tell us when they're buying shit That's whether true. we like it or yeah. not like they're just like yeah i spent this much money on shoes cry about it yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like but right. guys it's a lot different like we're like oh uh, we're like i don't know if we should do this so thinking about it i don't know i don't know so yeah mm-hmm. i could yeah i can see why it would be guys who made all the stupid decisions and especially vacations vacations yeah. just seems like a real guy move yeah for sure and you're like oh yeah oh uh, we have a wedding that weekend <laughs> you <doing>? all right <laughs> yeah but you said you want to go yeah, <laughs> yeah not then <laughs> yeah 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 fascinating that. fascinating and then of course uh millennials so they come come in hey. with the, the heavy the, the leading generation spending most of the dollars so proud Proud that we're maintaining some sort of status there. So shouts to millennials. Listen, we're getting the most dollars. It's what we do. Fourteen <laughs> billion. Well, again, let us know at Brunch Breakdown. What's the dumbest thing you've purchased drunk on the internet? Have you bought a pet? Have you bought a car? <laughs> I, I need to look into Carvana. That's like a whole nother subject that I need to talk about because I have to, I have to find that out. Like, how is it that easy to buy? Because right. it is terrifying. Dangerous. Terrifying. Dangerous. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan, let's get into our favorite segment here on the Brunch Breakdown. Brunch Court. Let's get into it. Let's do it. I'm trying to think of where to even begin here because we have some just crazy, crazy things uh, for Brunch Court today. Um, Didi, you shared this one. Let's pull this (laughs) bad boy up. (laughs) And there it is. The Coors Light Corsicles is what they're calling these. And yes, it is exactly as terrifying as it sounds. It's basically frozen Coors Light popsicle, I guess, in the sleeve, just like just like when you were kids. Um, <laughs> just like mom used to make. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you shared a story with some people that have tried this, and it's just, it's a horrifying read. Um. <laughs> Just to give you a couple of uh, notes from it here, um, six packs a six pack costs twenty dollars. Um, let's see what else. Um, you have to cut it open because it's not a normal fr- normal freeze pop that you can break open or chew off the top. Um, not. And it, let's see, it smells bad. It smells like weed, not in a good way. A um, <laughs> lot of sugar involved. It gets, as you can imagine, it gets way worse the warmer it gets. Um, so just a couple of notes from some experienced users, but Daniel Dudley, um, your thoughts on the Corsicle? Uh, have you, honestly, the first time I saw this, the first thing I thought was, so this is for the people who put beer in the freezer and like it <laughs> right because that's all i can think of is that when you like you know because you know we all know the trick like you put beer in the freezer to get it cold faster but then like a lot of the time you forget that you put it there yep and then you have a gross frozen beer 
that sometimes explodes in your freezer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Been there. And that's all I could think of here was that like they're like, you know what? We're gonna break the in case of emergency box and we're gonna do it. Corsicles, it's time. Hit the button. <sighs> like, are they they're trying to jump on this? Cause we saw a lot of seltzers do this last yeah. summer, right? What made them think that this was like what people want? It's She's terrifying. It's terrifying to think of people actually enjoying these. And it 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 looks disgusting. It, oh. It's like they it should have added some like, dye or something in it because it's just like disgusting yellow. Frozen disgusting. beer. Frozen it beer. It looks like frozen beer. Yeah. Oh. Like, no. And of course, it's Coors Light, which I find to be like the worst of the worst. So absolutely not we're way down on this no 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 No. and for any other beer out there don't don't do this Mm -hmm. like i don't care what beer it is i don't i don't care this is not like a thing where like we have time we will rip Coors light at other times during the show but this is not one of those times right i don't care what beer it is (laughs) i do not care yes the best beer that i've ever had i don't want this I do, I do not. <laughs> right. Like I do not. Ballast Point. Don't start making a pineapple sculpin. It. Yeah, sickles. I don't want it. Don't do it. <laughs> Please don't. Don't do it. <laughs> oh boy. Cool. I'm glad we're on the same page there. Yeah. Um, no. So we're gonna stay the next one. Kind of gotta stay in the same lane uh, in terms of the alcohol seltzer. We mentioned seltzer a little bit there. Didi, this is. Um, you have not seen this. Usually you get you get a chance to see them right before, but here we go. What you were seeing for your very eyes. <laughs> Sunny D yes. seltzer. Sunny D seltzer. Okay. It's real Ooh. and Ooh. it's coming. It's hitting shelves now. Um I, I I I'm psyched. I'm psyched about this. And me, Mr. Like not seltzer fan. I dig me some Sunny D and I am excited to try this. I just hope it doesn't taste like garbage because I'm a little afraid, but I don't know how you can really mess it up. Sunny D, unique flavor and just can't be too sweet. And Sunny D was never light on sugar. Let's be real. Um, I need them to do California style too. That Cali style Sunny D. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me that, but I'm on board. I'm on board. What about you? What took so long? (laughs) <laughs> it's vodka orange juice. Like, what are we doing? Like, what, what are we doing here? We're not, this isn't like it's vodka orange juice. But like, where were you guys when the, the the seltzer rush was happening? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Right. It's 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 vodka orange juice. Like, I'm yeah. This is this is great. Like, well, I don't even have to try this to know it's great. But when right. I see it, I'm gonna grab it because I know it's gonna be great. Like, this is this is perfect. This is, I mean, just gr- throw the brunch breakdown logo on there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sunny D and Buck- Sunny D Buck and Seltzer, come on. This yeah. is a no-brainer. It's a home run. No-brainer. It's a like, home run. I, I wish I had something else to say other than that, but I don't. This is just, it's, yeah. yeah. No, that's a great point. What Perfect so marriage. And I'll tell you what, it makes you just like kind of think then like if this is also – what's been taking so long but like is this just the first step like could we be seeing like could capri sun get in the mix here could a little high c little kool-aid little juicy juice are we on our way there people hitting that hitting those millennials right right in the nostalgia gut with this i mean this is how you get us this is how you do it right here this is how you do it it. so excited excited for that one excited for that one um okay now, the last one up here. Um, serious this, voice. Yeah, got to get serious. Um, a <laughs> couple people had apparently shared this with us, and we didn't, and I didn't notice it. So, so my my apologies. So we're bringing it to the table now. <sighs> okay, I, I hope you're ready for this. This is no stop. Get it out of my face. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> Oh man, I love it. I love it. Didn't even get to say what you saw it instantly and we're just offended. Offended. So if you're listening and not watching, 
what he what we are looking at is Hidden Valley Ranch ice cream. Okay, the good folks. Well, no, not the the people at Van uh, Lewin ice cream, which, by the way, may sound familiar. It's the same people that did the mac and cheese ice cream that we talked okay. about last year. Okay, same people, same company. <laughs> Um, yes, teamed up with Hidden Valley to make Hidden Valley Ranch ice cream. Uh, they have a couple other flavors they're launching all at the same time, exclusively at Walmart. Uh, this week, people, this week, so it's fresh. Um, so the mac, and, the Hidden Valley Ranch flavor is savory flavors of ranch, buttermilk, herbs, and a touch of sweetness. It's that, and then the other flavors are like actually good though. Sweet maple cornbread, blood orange chocolate chip, carrot cake, strawberry shortcake, honey graham, cac- graham cracker, and lemon limoncello cake. All sound amazing. However, this is disgusting. Beyond belief disgusting. I mean, oh, I'm like getting nauseous thinking about what this could taste like. Do you like ranch? I I like ranch. Like. Like is the word. I'm not, I don't. Like, I'm not obsessed with it. I don't love it. I like ranch. It has an appropriate place in time for me. Uh, yeah, I, that's the thing. I like ranch with things, like, yeah. certain, but it's not like, but I could live without it. Also, yeah. like, I like ranch when I'm eating, like, buffalo wings or whatever, but, like, I don't right. need it. Um, And, I, you know, ranch with whatever. I'll, you know, I like ranch and, like, wraps and stuff, but, like, I don't need it. Right. So, like, right. but I just don't understand how you just, ranch and ice cream like you're just because to me all you're doing is just you're just scooping ranch and eating it but then like throwing ice cream inside there too Ugh. like you're just dumping yeah. ranch on top of like vanilla ice cream and then going for it this no. is like what this is what the corsicle is it's like basically the same concept you're just yeah. like freezing the product <laughs> right and like, cause there's buttermilk and in, in ranch already, so it's yes. not like they've. I mean, they obviously have to add, add do some different things to cur- turn it into ice cream, but like that base is there. So, ooh, put a bottle of ranch in your freezer, <laughs> take it out, start licking it, and see if you like it, and then buy this. This can't be good. This can't be good. This can't be good. It it can't be good. Uh, things we've told people to do on the brunch breakdown today freeze a beer <laughs> and lick it freeze some ranch and lick it only one place you're getting that content ladies and gentlemen <laughs> that's right here <laughs> interesting oh brunch court this God. week my friend interesting very, brunch court. very. yeah <laughs> well, let's get into some music before we get out of here all right. Um, so first up for me, this song is an absolute banger, and I don't even really know how to say this person's name. Uh, Aladio Carion, I think that's how you say it. Uh, him and he has a song that is very popular in Latin America called Mbappe, which is named after the very famous soccer player Mbappe. And um, they just put out the remix and has Future in it. And it doesn't need future, but I get why people do these crossover things get, to get the American audience and whatever. But this mm-hmm. song is amazing, regardless who the hell's on it. Like, it's so good that, like, I need one of those old, like, 2000s rap remixes to it where there's just, like, 10 artists on it for no reason. <laughs> and it, 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 it's just, everyone's just saying, like, three words. Like, I need that. This song is, it's so good. And this is, like, an absolute banger. And I don't know... If this is going to be like, because it's what, what are we talking about? We're at the end of March right now. This might be a song that ends up being just like a crazy banger, like all summer long. Like it might be like, this wow. is going to be whenever this song catches here and it's going to, it's, it's going to, I feel like it's never going to go away. Like this song is just, I mean, this is just a straight hip hop banger. The first, like, yeah, not the first one in 2023, but definitely a big one. This is big. So Mbappe, yeah. Aladio, Carillon, and Future the remix. Well, it, it sounds out. good. So whether that you said it's it correctly good. or not, it's not. It's not. It's, you know, oh. you, you made it sound good, and I'm I'm excited to hear that. I'm excited to That's hear good. that now. Um, all time low, released another album. Hey, um, and it's called "Tell Me I'm Alive," and it's just amazing from start to finish. It really is. It's 
and I can really respect a band that stays true to who they are, who they are without taking, you don't, uh, you know, I respect people who take risks too. And all time low has evolved over the last 15 years, however long they've been around for a long time. They've evolved, um, but not made like huge left turns or tried anything crazy and weird that like, we all go like, what are you doing? Um, they just keep putting out records consistently and they just keep touring and they just grind. And I respect the hell out of them for that uh, without any drama or taking long breaks or anything like that. They just keep doing it. And the music is consistently good. And this music is as well. I'm going to put on uh, probably my favorite song off the record called uh, New Religions. And it features my man, our boy, Teddy Swims, hey! which I was like super excited to see too. So all about that brand new all time low. Check it out, dude. You know, I was thinking about that all time low and, and it's going to be weird, but it's like, cause they're so poppy, but like five seconds of summer, I feel like never ch- like, well, everybody else kind of jumped on this, you know, pop punk revolution, like 2020 mm-hmm. or whatever this, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, they just continue doing it. And we're yeah. like weave in and out of genres and stuff, stayed relevant, jumped on all these tours and everything. And I just, you know, I feel like credit needs to be given to those guys. And I, because I haven't listened to this album yet, but I saw that it came out and I'm just like, you know, All Time Love has just been consistently just going and not yep. chasing the wave of what everybody's been doing over the last like couple of years. They were like, no, we've been here. And I feel like the same thing, I was thinking about Five Seconds of Summer, which I'm putting on the playlist this week. So that's funny. We didn't talk about this, but she looks so perfect came on uh wow she was what, what's it pop 2k um came on our pop no no it's no it's a new station whatever the new one's called it's like it's 11 or something i don't know anyways oh yeah uh, yeah i forget what it's called but I it's know. like the 2010s music yep but i forget yep. what it's called the 10 spot i think maybe the, maybe it's that's the it 10 spot. yeah right okay well anyways yeah. she looks so perfect came on and i was like i haven't heard this song in years and i'm like wow. this song's freaking great and so i'm putting it on the playlist Five seconds okay. of summer. She looks so perfect. Wow. Yeah, that's a bit of minutes since I heard that song too. Wow. I know. Nice. Um, I'm putting blue the blue to tiger back on a, hey. on the playlist. Yeah, okay. she um now she is really evolving as a solo artist, and I just love everything she's putting out. Um, because there's layers to her music and her songs. Because if you remember when I first put her on, I don't know how many years it's been now, but she's not just a singer. You know, she started as a bass player. That's where it all began. And her music all was like there was bass in every element of it. And some music, some songs now more than others. Uh, but you can just get the 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 layers of her as a songwriter versus just a lyricist or a, a vocalist or anything like that. So her new song that came out last week is called Lipstick. Throwing it on the playlist this week. Nice. Um, My last one. I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think I put this on the playlist because it's been out for a little bit. I don't think I put it on here. Maybe you did. Maybe somebody else did. But the Kid Leroy, I guess it's love. We put that on the playlist. I don't think that song. No, I don't think so. Okay, because he's been releasing like songs like, you know, basically, I feel like he's been releasing like every couple of weeks for the last like month or so. Yeah. Um, But I guess it's love is a jam. And Mm -hmm. I really like the Kid Leroy. Very excited to see him at Coachella and less than a month shouts to you dan we'll send you video and uh this song i can't wait to hear live uh i I guess it's love check it out yeah he has he's been putting out really good music really good music uh last one for me is from charlotte sands Uh, she's been on the playlist a couple times before she released a new song last week called six feet under and just another really great alt alternative pop jam um recently she's been touring for paris which just seems like exactly a tour made for me um (laughs) and you know in due time she'll be headlining her own shows and i hope to be able to see her live one day but uh six feet under charlotte sands nice well that is what we're listening to we'll see if chris adds some things onto the playlist later on but check it out on spotify it's updated every week and we keep the songs on from the week before so we just get double stuff playlist and it's awesome so check it out sounds of brunch on spotify tell siri or alexa to play the sounds of brunch and bam it starts playing there you Do go that. love it all right well dan any final thoughts 
on the brunch breakdown. I don't know, Dee. Do you feel like we've learned a lot? We're trying to help the people out there, you know, just we are. don't, you know, lick it or eat frozen Coors Light, frozen ranch, and then, uh, or else you're going to end up buying yourself a, a, a pet or a car or something drunkenly online. Just don't, don't do these things. Wow. And that's the brunch breakdown. We're out. <laughs>